Hello, so we are ready for our next video of Latin words. CLAT aspirants had been really doing very well and in the response that I have got from the students of the Latin words because I told you there are only two uh, languages that is French and Latin from which English has enriched the maximum. And so let us start further with our Latin words. We have already done 20 words yesterday and coming up with the next part of the Latin words. The words I scroll quick in a quick go so that we can move on to the next word quickly. Right, I hope you have understood the words, any word where you got stuck or you faced any kind of a problem, you are most welcome to let me know. Right, so we have to start from here that is ignis fatus. Ignis fatus is a false hope. It is a very important idiom that is the will of the wisp. Will of the wisp means something which is uh, not having a chance of getting successful. It is something which is a false hope. It is a delusion. It is a hallucination. You know, it is a fool's paradise. It is something which has no chances of getting completed. It is a mirage, it is a phantasm or it is a phantasma, it is a friar's lantern and the jack of lantern. It is something which is just a false hope. It is something where there are no chances of it getting completed, right. Moving to our next word, very interesting that is in ex entremis. In entremis is in desperate straits, right. What is desperate straits? That is you are almost fading, you are in the on the vein, right. Moving on to on the vein, on the vein means something that you are lacking in, something that you are uh, perishing for, sinking or vanishing or withering. That means on the vein, it is almost on the deathbed. It is something which is perishing, something which is about to get over, withering or on the death's door. Please see that he was tied with the, yes, with a thin string, he was about to die. He was on its deathbed. The idiom that I have given you, yes, that is on the vein. On the vein means getting less, getting declined, getting deteriorated. Moving to our next word, in loco parentis. In loco parentis is in place of a parent. That means a person who does not have parents, the people who act as his guardian or act as a custodian for it or acting as a pediatric for it. You know, ped root, yes, what is ped root? That is child. So, this is acting in place of a parent or acting as a guardian, right. Moving to next word, in vacuo. In vacuo is in reference to the surroundings around you. That is without any regard for reality. There is a gap, there is a void, there is an exhaustion. There is nothingness, a rare faction, a space which is a vacuity or a free space. Something with reference to the surroundings all around you is a vacuum. You must have heard the word vacuum. Yes. So, vacuum. When we say this vacuum means it is airtight, there is something where we do not allow anything to pass through. Inter alia, please mark it, put an asterisk to the word. Inter alia is among other things. It is additionally, it is something which is in along with among other things. It is among people who are there and it is in association with them. That means you are linking a thing with some other thing and that is why this is inter alia that is among other things. Moving to our next word ipso facto. Ipso facto is by the facts itself. Whatever the facts that we have, you are referring to those facts only. It is a misinformation. It is a simple comparison of two things. So, that is a ipso Factor. We use it very common in their day to day life. Lingua franca, yes, your favorite word. Lingua franca is also a Latin language word. English is the lingua franca of all the masses. It is a language of the people. 80 percent people of the world know this language, speak this language and use this language. So, lingua franca is language of the masses. It is an accent, it is a dialect, it is an expression, jargon, prose, sound. It is a speech or a terminology, a vocabulary, a wording, an articulation of the words and that that is why it is lingua franca. Yes, English is lingua franca. Magnum opus. See the root that works here? 
that is magen, magen means large and opus something which is a masterpiece. You must have heard of Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa is the Leonardo da Vinci's magnum opus that is masterpiece best creation par excellence beyond comparison something which cannot have a comparison which is perfect yes as we have Hamlet, Macbeth, King Lear, Othello the four great tragedies of Shakespeare which are the magnum opus the masterpiece the best creation of him. Moving to next me kalpa, me kalpa sometimes you find mean kapla some places that is me is I and kalpa is false that means you ex accept your fault. It is very uh, easy to just say that I am sorry for my mistake. You acknowledge your mistake and accept that you made a mistake. You feel guilty, you apologize, you say your excuses for it or you uh, accept that yes, this was a blunder committed by you. The next word is modus operandi. Modus operandi from the word mode is manner, operandi, working, manner of working. Then it is a working method, it is an arrangement, it is a manner, it is a technique, it is a procedure, it is a plan of action. You know when we have a course of action, uh, when we are talking of critical reasoning, same way we have a plan of action, what are we going to do, how are we going to operate it, like we make a strategy, we make a plan of our uh, you know success. So, so that is modus operandi. The next word from the root viv, yes, what is viv? Viv means life. So, modus vivendi manner of living, a lifestyle, a life uh, manner of living your life in a very comfortable zone, living such a life where you have planned everything, you know. You must have heard of the famous idiom, every person saves something for the rainy day, yes. So, it is what? It is a manner of living, the manner of working. So, modus vivendi, modus operandi. Non sequester is an appropriate remark, it is a falsehood, it is inconsistent, it is misinterpretation, it is a kind of a paradox. Please note this, we do use it in English as a literary device that is a self contradictory statement and we, it is untrue, it is ambiguity from the root ambi, yes what is ambi? That is two, doubt between two things, it is a deceptiveness, it is a delusion, it is an equivocation, it is an erratum from the root error that is mistake. So, anything which is an ambiguous thing, which is paradox, which is in twist and turning of the thing that we call non sequester. Persona grata, see the word persona from the root person that is personality. We talk of Carl Jung's book personality where we have introvert, extrovert and ambivert. Now here it is an accepted person, a person who is a good fellow, he is a welcome guest, he is somebody who is a born homie, a good natured person who is liked by people, he is a person who is welcome at home, he is not somebody where we have a bugbear, yes a bugbear, a people, people were not seeing him. People would not like to run away from his company. Persona non grata, very opposite to that word. Yes, you can write for this. What is it? Yes, bugbear. Betanoir and the synonym? Yes, bugbear. It is a pet PV, it is something which is referring to anything, any person who is, you know, seeing the company, a braggadico, maybe a bugbear, maybe a betanoir. Seeing the person, the person wants to run away, he is unacceptable by the society. Prima facie has been a part of a clap paper and Nalsa paper too on the first appearance, yes first view, the first glance visually on the face of, apparently, clearly, evidently by the appearance of first sight or superficial sight something that you see on the first go. Right? On the prima facie he appeared innocent but later on after the investigation it was found it is not so, he is the culprit. So, this is the first appearance. Post factum from the root post that is after, factum is the facts, so after the given facts. So, it is an attendant, it is something which is posterior from the root post after, it is retroactive, retrospective, you saw the word retro that is back, we have retro fashion, retrospective, recollecting the past. You must have heard the idiom, yes, chew the curd, go down the memory lane or brown study or reverie that is recollection of the past. Quite pro cue, yes, 
clock 20, 20, 12, right, 12 we had this, something which is given for or something which is received, means you give something and you receive in exchange of something, it is a kind of an barter system, it is kind of an exchange, it is kind of trade, it is a swamp, it is a switch, it substitutes you or reciprocate, you have to, you know life is a give and take relationship and you reciprocate for that, you return in payment or you give a remuneration for that and that is quid pro Q. Something is given and something is received in space of it that is quid pro Q. Wonderful, interesting word. Sign D without a fixed date. Yes, exactly. It was part of elite paper also. Sign, I have done uh, even a shots of this. Sign and sans means yes without and D that is date. So, without fitting a fixed date, it is something which is regularly no end, infinite, eternal, immortal which keeps going on, never perishes and is perpetual. Yes, perpetual. Sign cure non, something which is indispensable. Indispensable means very important. Prerequisite means without it you cannot think of. It is indispensable, very, very important. Something necessary, something which you cannot avoid, something has to be there. Without it you cannot think of. Indispensable, inevitable, unavoidable, it is very, very vital and important. Status Q, at present situation, what is the present scenario? Yes, the scenario. So, means the state of affairs, the status, the existing condition of something that is status Q. Sub Rosa, Sub Rosa is secret behind the curtain, hidden, latent, hidden, not exposed, something which is right, it is covered, something which is cloaked and it is not known. Please note the word very important for your synonyms, surreptitiously, discreetly, furtively, clandestine, hidden and unknown, behind the curtain. It is a secret, private, confidential method of doing things. Most of the people who take bribe, they do it in a very sub rosa or surreptitious, clandestine manner. Sui generis is a unique manner of doing thing, class of its own, somebody who does not have a rival, which is unrivaled, which is something which is unique and which has no equal of its own, that is Sui generis. So, we come to the almost end of the words and this is our last word that is vox populi from the word voice of the people. Yes, because India is a democratic country and voice of the people carries a lot of weightage. When people have one accord, one thinking, one uh, unison attitude, when people are more in their popular belief, that kind of an attitude is vox populi and in a democracy, vox populi yes really matters, right. So, this ends our Latin words. I hope you have enjoyed them, marked them, written their synonyms, made sentences. You know, this is the bubbly and the vivacious attitude we look forward to in each and every class and your response makes it something perfect, right. Thank you.